You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On Monday, Arizona's big man, Umar Balo, entered the transfer portal. And it's interesting, when I first started looking at Balo, and I've, I've watched him quite a bit this year, more than I typically would watch Arizona, both because of my Locked On College basketball responsibilities and because Caleb Love being at Arizona, I just happened to watch Arizona more than I usually would. And, and, and from those moments, my initial note that I wrote here, I, I said, I'll say this right off the top. I would take him, but I believe there are better fit options to replace Armando Baycott. Now let's talk about why. But the more I started to wrap my brain around some of what he could add, I've kind of come back around on Balo a little bit as I've prepared for this conversation here on our Tuesday episode of Locked on Tar Heels. But here's what it's all going to come down to, folks. It's going to all depend on what Hubert Davis is going to be looking for in terms of roster construction to try to replace Armando. If he's looking for a basically Armando replacement, Umar Balo is your guy. If he's looking for more of a stretch five who can get out and shoot a little bit, Umar Balo is not your guy. Now, we all know that North Carolina is going to need some beef in the post because Baycott's gone and James Aconquo entered the transfer portal. And Jalen Washington has a lot of great things he does, but having size to move around ACC centers is not one of them. So Carolina needs somebody with beef and meat and girth, and Umar Balo is in that mold. So let me unpack for you some of what Balo does, and then you can make those decisions for yourself. Do you think he would be a good fit with this roster? Yes or no. But ultimately, as you always know, It's not up to us. It's up to the coaching staff. So Umar Balo is from the country of Mali. I love that. Super cool. Um, And uh, how ironic would it be, by the way, with Caleb Love having just gone to Arizona last year, if Arizona sent somebody, it's like a player to be named later situation, if Umar Balo came back to North Carolina next year. This dude, you talk about Armando Baycott, big man replacement. He's bigger than Armando, both height and width. Seven footer, 260 in terms of what his numbers were on Arizona's roster last year. Balo has one year of eligibility remaining. This is actually going next season will actually be his sixth year in college. He was at Gonzaga two years, redshirted his first year, and then basically went with Tommy Lloyd from Gonzaga to Arizona. For those who are unaware, Tommy Lloyd is Arizona's new coach. And he had been previously an assistant under Mark Few at Gonzaga. So Umar Bala was there. They basically went together. He's played the last three years at Arizona. And now, just like RJ Davis could, has the opportunity to utilize COVID eligibility. Something I really like about the prospect of Umar Bala is this prospect I've been talking about a lot. Get old, stay old. He would help with that. A veteran who's mature, who's been on the pack first team all Pac-12 the past two seasons, who was on the Pac-12 all defensive team this past season. I mean, he is a big man who knows what he does well, who knows what he doesn't do well, and just like stays in his lane. For example, literally never attempted a three-point shot in college in his career so far. That's what we're talking about. So what I want to do is I've broken this up into the good, the bad, and the average kind of in between that. I'll give you some career numbers and then kind of give my thought on Balo ultimately. The good, and I've got several things listed here. The biggest good for me is field goal percentage. Again, not shooting threes. This man lives in the lane where he is a career. This is not just last year, a career. 64.6% shooter on all field goals. And last year, he had a career high 65.8%, so it's going up. That was good for fifth in the nation. Unreal stuff. For what it's worth, by the way, Vlad Golden from FAU, who we've talked about as a potential Armando replacement, was third in the nation in field goal percentage last year. So let me just, to give you some context on how good that 65.8% was this past year, Armando, 54.4% on field goal this year. So. Umar Balo was 11 percentage points better than Armando this year. So, you know, you you think about like one of the few frustrations that I ever felt with Armando is just missing a lot of bunnies, missing some dunks, like that key dunk against Alabama, unfortunately. But he had multiple others this year. Balo 
when when he's in by the rim, you he is scoring on you, you know, nearly two thirds of the time. I mean, that's great stuff. So that would be a welcome change. Dominance in and around the paint. Next on the good, Umar Balo has is not a, a double double machine at the same level as Armando Baycott, but for the first time in his career this past season, he averaged a double double, twelve point nine points, which was slightly down from the year before, but also ten point one rebounds, which was up from eight something in the the previous year. So uh, love to see Balo. Uh, you know, while he's not scoring as much this past year, really brought up that rebounding average. And I think that is critical to be aware of. Here's another thing that I really like about what Balo brings to the table. A lot of big men, especially his size, are pretty turnover prone. Not the case with Umar Balo. Doesn't turn it over as much as what you see a prototypical, you know, back to the basket center. Just 1.2 turnovers per game for his career. So that's not just like, hey, he had growth in this year, 1.2 turnovers. Like his entire college career averages 1.2 turnovers per game. I can get on board with that. Rebounding. I talked about how that's come up. This past season, he was 15th in the na- in the nation in rebounds per game, and he was 17th in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. Uh, so is able to bring some of that Armando Baycott offensive rebounding prowess. I love that not only is Balo seven foot tall, but he's also got a nice, good wingspan. He's good with both hands, can go up with his right or his left. You don't get up to just shy of 66% on your free th- field goal attempts, excuse me, by being good with one hand. He can do it good with both. Both, And what I like, also, you, you look at his size and his numbers and you think, oh, he probably just bullies his way in the paint. He does, but also Balo has the ability not only to just be a powerful post player, but also has some good touch and finesse that he can operate with as well. So those are some of the good categories where I'm like, yes, all in on Balo on those things. In terms of where he's kind of average, but you know, not great, but not awful. The first one that jumps out at me is blocks. You know, when you think of a seven footer, I'm like, especially one with girth, I'm like, buddy, I, w- I want to see you blocking a lot of shots. But because of that size, he's not this massive high flying above the rim kind of guy. But this past season averaged 1.3 blocks per game. Again, kind of average. Um, that tied for 148th in the nation. So it's it's not awesome. But I mean, he is uh, changing shots. But let me just remind you about this. And this is where I, I kind of, vacillate back and forth with his blocks similar to leaky black defense is not just about blocks and steals it's about doing the pre-work remember i said umar balo on the all pac-12 defensive team this year so just just keep in mind he's doing other things to affect the game defensively beyond just blocking shots the other place that he's average is he's he's not slow of foot but he's certainly not fleet of foot so i would put him in in his quickness in the middle and then the bad, I've got two things I want to point out, you know, because I want to be fair in my evaluations of all these guys. I don't want to just say, hey, this is great. Let's go get him. Two areas that I'd like to see growth. The 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 like real like, oh, is free throw shooting. Umar Balo for his career is 56.4%. This past year was under 50%. He shot 49.5% from the free throw line this past year on 5.3 attempts per game. For a North Carolina team that for the past couple years has been seeing some of the highest free throw percentages literally in program history, that is an eyesore that the Tar Heels just cannot bear to have. So that's something. That number has to come up for somebody that if Carolina is going to go out and get him, they're going to rely on him in the post. They're going to operate through him a lot. And that brings me to the other point. You can't operate through him as much as you'd like to because his career assist percentage is, or uh, uh, assist per game average, excuse me, is 0.8 assist per game for his career. That tells me that while Umar Balo scores at a high efficiency level when he gets the ball, that he's also a little bit of a black hole. You know, I prefer a center. I'm thinking of somebody like DJ Burns from NC State, who to me was the best passer on their team this year. Um, And so that's what I'm looking for is, yes, somebody that can go get a bucket inside when you need it, but that also will it like when he's doubled is able to make the right pass to the right person at the right time. 
less than an assist per game for his career tells me that he's not always doing that very well. So that would be an area of growth I'd like to see. In terms of like career highs, let's start with points. Umar Balo had 30 points in a game versus Creighton last year. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, Creighton has Ryan Kalkbrenner, who's also a legit like seven footer, maybe 6'11", but is like the multiple time Big East defensive player of the year, not just on the defensive team, like defensive player of the year for the Big East. And Balo went out and put 30 on him. So that's very encouraging to me. Um, now for his career, he's only got eight games in which he scored 20 or more points. I, I would like to see that number higher, but all right. Um, in terms of double doubles, I talked about that earlier. He does, he's not like in Armando Baycott territory, but he does have 34 career double doubles. So a very solid number in that regard. And as I said, that number has been coming up lately in terms of rebounding. He does have one career game of 20 or more rebounds had 21 this past season against FAU. And I bring that up because that's over 20 rebounds against Vlad Golden, who is a fellow true seven footer from FAU, who by the way, is also in the transfer portal right now and was third in the nation in field goal percentage this past year. So just keep all that in mind. Um, so, you know, it's doing some good things in the interior, but that, that is, if Carolina is going to get him, that's what you're looking for is a true honest to goodness uh, center who's playing back to the basket. That's what you're getting with Umar Balo. So if Carolina was to go in on him, what would it mean? For me, it would mean that you have to have shooters everywhere else, or else we're going to see what's happened to Carolina some of the past two years where players start to sag off an Elliot Cadeau, right? Off a leaky black. Uh, not this year, obviously, but in recent years. Because that's not going to be Balo. So other teams are going to try to surround him in the paint and make life very difficult if the other four guys can't hit from outside. So that's something you just got to be aware of, meaning Elliot Cadeau's got to be ready to shoot, meaning you need somebody like Cade Tyson to replace Cormac Ryan, meaning if RJ Davis isn't back, you got to be having somebody out there that can knock down uh, three-point shots from outside. Like You can't have a lineup that, at least right now as you think about it, is Elliot Cadeau, Seth Trimble, and Umar Balo. That's three not very reliable three-point shooters on the floor together. And in today's college basketball world, that's not going to cut it. So that's just something to keep in mind if North Carolina is going to get Umar Balo. I think he is somebody worth taking a very long and hard look at. But again, ultimately, it all comes down to what Hubert Davis's preferences for building his roster for next season.